Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Sifted Video Game Fantasy Draft for 2024. We are the first ever video game fantasy league. I came up with the idea back in 2014. Or actually, I came up with the idea back when I was at Game Trailers, and then we never used it at Game Trailers. And then when I started Sifted, it was one of the first things we did. First year we drafted with Marcus and I. That was, what, 2015? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was Marcus and I, and Matt and I have done it against each other ever since. Um, I'm on a little bit of a roll. I've won three out of the four last years of our league. Um, and last year I won without getting Zelda after I had drafted Zelda for like three years yeah, straight. Suicide Squad screwed me. It really did. Or you're not getting a full complement of games is what yeah. really screwed you. Um, there was it, just no reason to think that Suicide Squad was not making it. I mean, it was yeah. supposed to come out in like it's April. It's absurd. It's absurd. Yep. Um, so anyway, how this works is we take turns picking games. I get to pick first this year. Matt got to pick first last year. We just alternate years. I um, mean, that's why he got Zelda. Um, and so we just take turns picking games until we get to the bottom. We pick 10 for each team, and then we get two alternates for each team. And basically, we have alternates so that if if two of our games end up not being released this year, they can slot in. And the, the order matters. So your first alternate, if you lose a game, it gets delayed out of the year, that first alternate goes into that slot. If you have another one that gets delayed out of the year, that second alternate goes into that slot. So the order of them absolutely matters. Um, so we do have like a safety net you guys don't get that, though, in the Sifted Fantasy Challenge, which, by the way, is open right now for you guys to go and make your picks. But I would argue you should not go do that until you watch Matt and I make our picks because we already went through the whole draft process. We've already went through the thought processes, thinking through the different games that were available and why we chose the ones that we did. I think, at the very least, you'll find a couple gems from Matt and I's teams that will help you make your picks for the Sifted fantasy challenge and again that is live at sifted.net right now you can go if you want to and make your picks right now but again i think you probably should wait um matt before we get going what was your overarching kind of feeling opinion on the draft and like just the year in games in general really uh we don't know much about the year in games yet yeah like it's basically all front loaded we know a lot up until june and then after that it's dicey. Even some of the games that we know are coming in the second half of 2024, they have these just ambiguous release dates. Q4, Fall 20. That stuff makes me nervous in a video game fantasy draft because, again, if a game doesn't come out, you get a zero. So at the end of it all, we take the Metacritic average for each game that we pick, we add it all up, and whoever has the biggest number wins the league. And again, I'm on a little bit of a roll. I've won three out of the last four. Uh, but this year, Matt, I really feel like mm -hmm. it is a total crapshoot. That's what I would say my impressions are having done the draft, is that this is a total crapshoot. I will be interested to see yeah, if I you mean, guys can very, even figure out. To, it's very hard to pick stuff that I thought would score well that would also come out this year for yeah. sure. Like there, There's not a lot of that. I mean, you kept making your picks right away. I was racking my brain. It literally drove me up the wall doing this draft. It was hard. It was easy. I mean, that always happens, though. You, you. you I take longer. You take twenty minutes to pick th something, and I was like that. Because while well, you're doing, I'm, while I'm you're working. doing that. Well, while you're doing that, I'm thinking, okay, I want this thing next, and if he picks that thing next, then I'm I'll move on to this, something else. I'll pick this. Yeah, like, I'm also working while we do our draft, so it's not. I don't take all that time making my picks. I'm like doing other stuff or whatever, but I do take longer without a doubt. But it has paid off, ultimately. I've won three out of the last four, so maybe taking a little bit of time makes a difference. You guys have all the time well, in the again, world. I would have won last year if Suicide Squad hadn't been a horrible idea from the start to finish. <laughs> like, like, there's no, there was no way. I, the, first, the previous two before that, fair and square, last year I got fucked by Warner Brothers. But, like, I mean, I got fucked when Zelda w was delayed. I mean, that's how this works. Right, but I knew that. Like, like, that's why I didn't pick Zelda that year. Cause I knew no, I had the first pick the year before, and I took Zelda before you could take it. Right, but also, I'm like, you could have picked that however you want. Look, everybody gets fucked in out. this. Let's just admit that everybody I'm, gets fucked in this. You you lose because you get fucked. That's how it works. You Everyone who's lost right, in this what is I'm, lost because right, they didn't I'm, have all their games well, coming What out. I'm saying is you didn't get fucked on Zelda because Zelda was definitely not coming that no, year. It was, no, there was Suicide. a date for Zelda for the prior year. It was in a trailer. Yeah, but I didn't believe it. But that's same as I didn't anyway, believe God of War. Anyway, we don't have time to do this. We need to get the draft going. So this year, I had the first overall pick, and I will say this: this was the easiest first overall pick probably ever since I've ever done this draft. And my first pick, even though I don't even really care about the game all that much, is, and you guys can probably guess it and say it along with me: Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Now, 
Matt, <laughs> it's pretty funny. I don't know if there's, there aren't too many games, honestly, Matt, where there is such a divide between how you and I feel about a game and how the general public feels about a game, mm. or at least the general game buying public, because they are all over this game. I'll be honest with you. I'm not even that excited also, to play I'll it. I'll say, no, I don't agree with that. Really? The gender game buying public does not pay attention to this game. It's the core game people. Well, it'll sell 8 to 10 million copies or whatever. How much did the first one sell? Nothing, near, nothing eight. close to that. It sold 8. Yeah. 8? Yeah. Final Fantasy VII Remake sold 8 million. Yep. Which I still think is low. If you think about how hyped it was, it was treated like the second coming of God. Um, it's, it's sad you guys won't give it a chance. I gave it plenty of a chance. I just think it's a terrible I mean, I, game. Dude, I played 20 some hours of the Final Fantasy VII remake. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't know what to I, tell you, I bro. I never like the original. There, I don't there's like no the hidden remake. agenda it's here. I just don't like the damn game. Like, except that other people have different opinions than you and like different things. I thought it was corny and cheesy. I didn't yeah. like it. I didn't like the combat. I didn't like that the enemies were, were like crazy hit point sponges. There's legitimate criticisms of yeah. that. Like I, I, like, I straight up, very honestly think it's a bad game that is buoyed by the fact that people love that fr that IP. I don't think it's bad. I don't, I don't mean. I think it's mediocre. But I, I think it's a bad game. Yeah. I think it literally is a bad game. Um, I think it has redeeming qualities to it. But the oh, bottom yeah. line is, this is all business here, people. The fantasy draft. It, what I think doesn't matter. It's what. I think everybody else thinks. And that's one thing you got to yeah, remember. Yeah, this thing's going to score in the nines. Yeah. Like, there's no way around it. <laughs> exactly. Like, if I think, what did the remake get? Like, in, like a nine, I, I think remember. it was. It was, like a it was high. High eight or low nine or something. Yeah, around there. I think this is going to score higher. I think this is going to get, like, a 9.5. Because I'll be honest with you, I will say this. I think this is going to be more what people had in their minds yes. when they thought yes. of a Final Fantasy VII remake, and so it's going to score better. I will say this. I am more excited to play this than I was the first remake. I think this has a better chance of being interesting to me. Yep, me too. Um, because also because it's the more interesting part of the game in the original. Too. Exactly. Yep. It, it's hard to screw it up. You get out of the world and you meet the other characters <laughs> that are more interesting than the core character group. You get to see the gold saucer stuff. I mean, there's that is, and it's, and I'm a lot more interested in how they're going to portray that mm -hmm. than I was in how they're going to portray the Midgar section yeah. anyway. Yeah, I'm more excited for this than the first remake, but that's still not saying all that much. So and I have to respect giving away the first game with the pre-order of yeah. the, I mean that's cool yep. like they're you know it didn't take them super forever to get the second part out so maybe the third part will be out before the end of the generation like you know you don't know Square, yeah. Square might screw you on that but, you know, but I, it seems like they're on track to get the whole thing done in I just think a reasonable it's, amount of time I just think it's the safest of all of them honestly well, I mean yeah I mean the, I, the, uh, the my first pick I think is the other like safe high scorer but Final Fantasy VII is coming out this year. Yeah. Like, that's the same. You know, I think we both got the right first picks, but yours is the one that's guaranteed to be out this year. Yeah. In terms of score, we got the right first picks. I don't know how that's going to shake out in the end. But Yep. Hello. You have to bear with me here a second, people. I'm having some issues here with... Um... With the TriCaster, this is a very... Oh, uh, it's because the clip ended and it gets weird about, yeah. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, I, I let the clip end and now it's just acting... Like... Now it, it activated the, all the wrong, like, <laughs> you know, preset. Yeah, that, that used to happen. I remember that. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think you have to turn it off and then on. Like, the... the, the I can't remember even the name of the effect. <laughs> Whatever the effect is, you got to, like, kind of turn it off and back on or whatever. Because uh... it doesn't deactivate when it tries to go to the next thing. You have to uh, the digital. What is the name? The digital. The the. There it is. You know I mean? But then it, it started is. playing. Now we're playing. <laughs> was that Silk Song? I don't know, but I don't know what <laughs> that, that is, is Hollow Knight Silk Song yeah. actually. Yes, which just kind of gave away one of the picks. But Matt, what is your first pick? My first pick is Star Wars Outlaws. Star Wars Outlaws. Which I think will rate about the same as Final Fantasy VII, but obviously we don't know if it's actually for sure coming this I year. mean, that's... So, obviously, I was sitting there waff... This is my most anticipated game of 2024. Mm. I wanted to pick this, but I just... Well, you got to go for the one that has an actual release date. And not just and a release coming date. coming like, like a month. Yeah, like on... Like it's, it's, it launches February 29th. Yeah, it's, it's early. early week, so it's a guaranteed nine-ish It's weeks away. Yeah. Like, you have to Like, even it. if it's delayed, I'm still pretty confident that it will make it into 2024. Yeah. Star Wars Outlaws, I mean, I feel 70% confident it's coming this year, roughly, somewhere around there. Yeah, I'd say I'm more confident, but there's, there's always a chance. Anything yeah. in this latter half of the year can slip. This is a risk-reward pick, though, Yeah. because there's no other game this year that's going to get you probably anywhere close to the score you're going to get from Outlaws. Yeah, no, I mean, I think there are. 
Um, I think there are two others. Unfortunately, you have them. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, man. We'll see. No, I, we'll, we'll get to them, but there are two. This is the first year in a long that I can remember where you got you got at least two that I'm like, fuck, I wanted that one. Yeah. And, and I think it's because we were both picking them at the same place. Well, it's also slim pickings. It's it is. so hard. Like, but the timing couple, of the pick there's a couple, like, a lot. There's a lot of things that are not the most obvious things in the world that you tend to forget about. And mm -hmm. I'll, I, I used to do that to you with NBA 2K all yeah. the time, which no longer is a guaranteed well, none of them are. I, anymore. Believe me, at the end of this draft, I was looking through sports games. I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm like, for my alternates, maybe I And those sports games are now getting like fives and sixes. Yeah, they're being... The end of this draft got really hard. Like, really, you'll see when we get to our picks here. As we like, our, especially our alternates. Like, it got really. The difficult. alternates are bonkers. The yeah. alternates are just like, ah, well, they're coming out. We, it was just you needed to, you needed not to get a zero. That's Pretty all much. That's all. I, that's where I was at when I was picking mm -hmm. them at the end. So, look, I, it, I I waffled between Final Fantasy Rebirth and this one. I would have, if I were in your shoes, I probably would have picked Star Wars Outlaws too. So I totally get it. Um, okay, now it's time for me to get to my second pick, and we've already kind of ruined it. But it is Hollow Knight Silk Song. I had this on my team last year. It was supposed to come out in June on Game Pass. I'm like, okay, once you announce that, it's a done deal. No. They never even they never even said hmm. why it never came out. Well, it's also it's, it's the only thing that didn't make it within the year from that presentation, yeah. isn't it? Like everything it's, else did come out. Yeah, it's bonkers. I don't understand what is going on with this damn game. It's like, the funny part is, this started as an expansion, yeah. like DLC, and then they realized, well, well, let's just make a new game. That was like four years ago. What? This has to come out this now, year, Where Matt. it is, it's bigger than the first one. I'm sure. At this point, it better be, but it has to come out this that year, Matt. The first one is not, not nothing. No, it's not. It, it, it has to come out this year. It just has to. You'd think. I mean, we said that last year. But, I mean... <laughs> We'll see. This is risky. I hate to. I can't, yeah. It's hard for me to admit that it was risky picking this game, yeah, but it was. It was. it was definitely not this high on my on my list, just purely because I don't trust this fucker anymore. But the math, the way I looked at it, I'm like, this may be the only other game mm -hmm. in 2024 that is almost guaranteed to get around a nine. I don't agree with that. Really? There's two others that you I'm, have. So this wasn't one of the two that no. you. Oh wow. Then I think then you must. Think I mean, I you're did probably well. you are probably right, but I was never probably going to pick this. Like at all, later. the whole draft. Probably not. I don't wow. trust it anymore. Interesting. Something's I, up. I can understand that. I got burned by it. Last I don't know year. what we don't know about this, but we don't know. Something. There's something. There's something going on yeah. for sure. I'm not saying it's a bad pick from you but especially because you already suffered through it for one year so <laughs> fuck it yeah you might as well you might as well have it in case it I are, off. it's familiar pain man yeah. <laughs> but we'll see i mean if if it does i'm no cool. it's a great payoff if it does if I mean, it does I come think, out i think you're guaranteed a nine plus on this yeah. if it comes out if it does come out yep um i'm gonna stop the trailer before it ends <laughs> so yeah. we don't have the same problem oh too late it wah, wah, wah. <laughs> oh, well, now you know what to do though. sucks man i don't actually know what to do <laughs> i still don't know what to do um i like fixed it on accident last time oddly enough um there we go <laughs> um okay so matt now it's your second pick my second pick is hellblade 2 yep Hellblade 2. Now, I talked about this in Game Face a little while ago, um, and I said that I was not impressed with what I saw. I think you're a party of one on that one. Yeah. I think the press is going to go nuts over this thing. Okay. Um, why not do you... saying they're going to be right, but I think it's going to get very high reviews. I don't remember, actually, what the um, first game got. Is first an one got score. eight, as I recall. Did it? First one got very high. Re that was part of why it got noticed was because everyone was like, hey, it's... This Ninja Theory game didn't cost very much, and it's really great. Like it got pretty high scores. Okay. It was like a. It was also kind of held up as like, oh, you can make a triple A feeling game without spending. Well, wasn't money. it called like the in first indie triple A or something? Yeah, it was some some buzz. They, yeah, Ninja buzz Theory tried to like come that. up with yeah. some like buzzword for yeah, it. Whatever, it got them bought. Why yeah, it, it worked. <laughs> I think it made them rich ultimately, so it did work. I Absolutely. think this is guaranteed in the eights. It yeah. might get nine if it's if it's really good. If it's exceptional, yeah. Um. We'll see. But you're right. Generally, the game... And again, has a date. Yeah, you're like, right. That was the important part. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. I mean, the games press does tend to gravitate towards games like this. Yes. It, games that have games sort, of, well. sort of a cultural angle to it that, comes out, that goes outside yeah. of the game sphere. And actually, one of the things that pushed me further to put this higher on the, on the pick list 
is in fact the fact that it's like eight to nine hours long. Oh, because game reviewers like it when their job is done in eight to nine <laughs> I hours. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to disagree with that. <laughs> yeah, Vincent says Hellblade's at an eighty-four. Okay, so well, you said a, you're counting on an eight here. Yeah. I think that's a safe bet. Um, I think you'll you'll be safe definitely at an eight or higher for Hellblade too. If something goes horribly wrong and it turns out to just be a just dance scene where she's screaming at you the whole time. <laughs> I, I could, it could well, just be a ritual singing simulator. Well, they'll know. never be able to blame Crunch for the game if it doesn't do well because no, they've they had more than enough time to make that game. So we'll see how it goes. Um, Mary Lomax wonder who picked Tekken. We did Tekken was disqualified. Oh yeah, we should have mentioned that off the top of the show. So all the games that are coming out over the next uh, week or and a half, two weeks, we cut out. So Tekken's yeah. not in there. Um, Suicide Squad's not in there. Yeah, um, we, it wouldn't have been like a, like a drag. <laughs> Dragon, yeah. Infinite Wealth Infinite isn't in there. in there. We also decided that we were we were not going to allow all the remakes or the remasters on mm -hmm. Switch that are coming up over the next few months. So like Paper Mario and a Thousand Year Door stuff like that. We we said we couldn't use. Yeah. We said we couldn't use um, the Elden Ring DLC mm -hmm. and what else? I think, I think that, that was it. I think that was it. So those are the things that we said we weren't going to include. Which I'll admit. I kind of regret it when we got halfway through this draft. Mm -hmm. I was like, I would really like to be able to pick from those games at this point, but it made it a little bit more difficult. Um, Persona 3, you'll have to wait and see if anyone picked Persona 3. Um, okay, so my third pick in the Sifted Video Game Fantasy Draft for 2024 is Dragon's Dogma 2. I I'll say this. I was very excited earlier when somebody said Dragon's Dogma 2 Game of the Year because... I'm not counting on that at all. I'll just be honest with you. Like, yeah, this is going to really depend on how much jank exists. In, I mean, this is a solid, probably solid 8 range. I'm guessing around an 8.4, just like yeah. Vincent said for Hellblade. And if it gets an 8.4, I'm totally cool with it. I think the first one's aggregate is like an 8.1 or something like that. That's I don't remember, right. but that yeah. sounds I about I mean, right. I personally rate it in the 9s. But right. like, in terms of what it would get from the general gaming press, yeah, yeah, that's about right. That's about what it got. So, look, again, you'll see as we get to the end of this draft that, like, you may be laughing, oh, Shane's pick's only gonna get an 81, his third pick. That's pretty good. Let me just tell you, being confident on an 80 or higher at the third pick of this draft is better than you think. Um, and if you watched the last episode of Game Face, you know why we're saying this, because this is right as of right now, a really off year for third parties. So yeah, um, Dragon's Dogma 2 is my third pick in the 2024 draft. Matt, what is your third pick? Princess Peach Showtime. This one shocked me, Matt. I got to admit. <laughs> I need... This one's going to review higher than people think. I mean, I, I believe that and I agree and with it's that. it's coming out. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Absolutely it is. Yeah. Um, this, I don't know. The, there is something about this game. The first time we saw it, that first trailer they put out was kind of weird and a little like janky. But then this one's awesome. Mm -hmm. And it makes the game look awesome. And to your point, like Nintendo games generally get a little bit of a bump, a little bit of extra love from the critics. Um, it's just such an unknown quantity and the game looks so bizarre. Yeah, but that's in its favor when You're kind of right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to sell, but I think it's going to review very well. Yeah, it probably will. Um, I will say this. You definitely could have got it later. Mm -hmm. You could have drafted it later. I wouldn't even have thought about this game probably until like my last couple picks would be my guess. Yeah. Well, I was hoping you wouldn't think about your next pick for longer. So maybe I should have gone for that next. Yep. And my next pick is... Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. This, this is one of the guaranteed nines. Laugh at me all you want over that pick, but... I know. This is going to be a 9.3. You think like so? That. Yeah, this is going to be a 9. 9 plus. Easy. Really? Easy. Easy. This is a guaranteed 9 plus. Wow. I probably should have picked it second. Wow. But I thought you wouldn't think of it for longer. No. I mean, it, you get so desperate to win this draft. Yeah. yeah. And in a normal year, you wouldn't have thought of this until 7 or 8. No way. But, but no, this, this year... I think this, I think this is a... One of the, I think it's a nine. Yeah, I mean the last the flight, and you know it's coming out this year because it's called twenty twenty four. Yeah, and, and honestly, that's why I picked it so high. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I would have also taken it down seven, eight, nine range. Um, but again, this game is fi finally gamifying the flight sim franchise, mm -hmm. um, and they could fall on their face. But probably not. But they probably never not. Have. The last one's in the 90s. Yeah. This one can only be better, really, in terms of what they're trying to do here. Yeah, I was sitting there like, I had this pick. Because it's basically all the same flight simulator stuff again, but prettier with more to do. And with incentive to get better yeah. at it. Like, yeah. I don't see a way it goes below the previous game's score. We'll see. But I'll say this. I sat, I had this pick, like, written down on a scrap of paper. And I sat there for a good five minutes saying to myself, am I really going to do this? 
Am I really going to pick this game with my fourth yeah. pick? And ultimately, I just could not find another game that I thought was a, more worthy and a better pick. So there you go. My fourth pick in the draft, Microsoft Flight Sim 2024. When I was talking about at the beginning of the draft, how you should watch this before you make your picks, because there are some games that Matt and I picked up on that you might not. This is one of the games I was talking about. Um, you might want to really seriously consider about having this in your sifted fantasy league um, lineup of 10 games because yeah, I would definitely put this high in your picks in the in that yeah because don't forget it's weighted as well so the higher your picks the more points you get for those if you if they actually come out and they do well so there you go my fourth pick in the draft is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 Matt what's next for you Banishers Ghosts of New Eden yep and again this may be one of these games where you're like what like why would Matt pick it? but it's coming out it's, this has, a, I think, it's guaranteed in like three eight. weeks. Yeah. yeah, guaranteed eight, maybe higher if it's really good. Don't nod has turned in top notch work before. I can't remember um, a don't nod game that didn't score at least seven point five. Yeah, yep. So it's a it's a good solid. You know, we're going for averages on this yeah. in the in the long run here. Yeah, you got again another reminder that this isn't like us picking like the games that we think are going to be the best. These are the games that we think are going to score well with everyone and are not going to get at zero. And, right, and are going to come out this year, hundred percent. Like that's what you should be thinking about with every single pick that you make for these drafts. That's how it works. Like getting a zero, and again in the Sifted Fantasy Challenge, no one has ever won with a single zero. You mm -hmm. need all ten games. Or you're not going to win. first year, the winner was the only guy who had all 10 games come out. And then people figured it out. Yeah. They're like, oh, now it's I got to yeah. be really cautious. Last year, there was, what, 30 or 40 yeah, people? Like that top, all... top 50 almost. Yeah. Like, top, yeah so but... You guys are figuring it out. But that's the truth of the matter is, like, make, getting a game that even gets a five or a six mm -hmm. is way better than getting a zero. Yeah. And you'll Again, see. Again, <laughs> if, if Suicide Squad hadn't gotten delayed a year, like, my score would have been substantially different. Because yeah. it was pretty close last yeah. year. Yep. Um, okay, so it's time for my fifth pick. But that zero kills you, no matter what it, it is. It does. It does you in. Absolutely. Um, my fifth pick, and I ended up taking this one a little earlier than I thought. I, I got a little flustered at this point of the draft. I'll be honest, Matt. Like, I was just like, this can't be real. Am I? Are these really the games that I'm picking with like my fifth pick? And they were. <laughs> and that pick is Rise of the Ronin. I n never dreamed I'd be picking this where I did. Is Team Ninja's next open world whatever. Each like sort of thing. Yeah. Another Asian influenced like I don't really know. I I I mean it was obviously on my list of potential choices. I just I don't know what to think of this. I don't know I have no idea what this is gonna review as. You know, I so I went back and I looked probably sevens or higher. I mean it's not a uh, not gonna get like panned or anything so Wo long was their last game which is very similar to this like i don't know why team ninja won't make a new damn game but it's also another game set in ancient e asia or whatever and it got like a 7.8 mm. it, it ain't that ancient it's well centuries ago it's 1800s yeah i mean centuries ago but they always have these old time period i don't know what their kick is lately but they just keep making these same similar I mean, style the of games. Team, the only Team Ninja games that really took place in modern day are the Ninja Gaiden. Yeah. Ninja Gaiden Dead or Alive universe. No, you're right. Yeah. They like those older. I feel like they're chasing things. the Ghost of Tsushima tale. I think they're chasing Dark Souls. I and, mean, their games are all Souls like. Yeah. And this is just kind of, they're kind of sticking to the Neo um, philosophy here. Like, these are all outgrowths of Neo, the things they're making. This is a PlayStation 5 exclusive. Um, so I don't know if that adds any incentive to Team Ninja to make sure it's amazing so they get more work from place to, I don't know. But again, I started searching around and I was like, I can't really find other games that are better than this one right now. And so Rise of the Ronin it is. I'll be happy if it gets an 8.0. I'm accepting at this point, it'll probably get a seven or a 7.5, sadly. Um, okay, Matt, what's your fifth pick? Tales of Kinzera Zhao. I'll say this. I was very happy that you picked this game because I am rooting for this game, like, big time. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know how it's... this. I don't think the studio's ever made a game before, right? No, but I'm betting that, like, it's a it's a pretty solid concept. It's a side-scroller kind of Metroid-ish thing, which usually uh, hits pretty well. Um, it has, you know, the, the subject matter and mythology they're drawing from is... Uh, definitely not over oversaturated. No, no. Like, something, like it's going to be... It's gonna, I think it's going to feel fresh. I think it's going to be 
um, you know, the guy who's doing it is, is very well liked. The team is the team. Everybody's everybody's rooting for this game. So Matt, I think it's going to uh, to your well. point earlier about like how game reviewers like games that have a cultural angle to them. Mm-hmm. I present to you Tales of Kenzera. <laughs> yeah. This will definitely get a bump for yeah. sure um, because of the sort of the, the topics that it's tackling. And in all honesty, like the presentation of this game at the Game Awards was incredibly endearing. Yeah. Everyone's rooting for that guy. Everyone's rooting for this game to be amazing. Um, at the end of the day, critics are humans. Mm-hmm. And as much as you want to try to say, I'm a robot and I look at things without any bias, that's impossible. So... I do think that ultimately this game will get at least a little bit of a bump and get a score maybe higher than the game actually deserves. So I'm also rooting for this game. I hope it turns out to be amazing. I hope it ends up being one of the games at the end of the year that we're all talking about. It's like this surprise um, that nobody saw coming except for Matt Kyle. Hmm. And I kind of saw it too. But I probably would have picked it a little bit later. Yeah. Um, Also, it seems pretty guaranteed to be out this year. Yeah. Yeah. And this is where I start straying into dangerous territory. This is where I started to get desperate, Matt, because I looked at you draft Tales of Kenzera, and I was like, is that really where we're at? It can't be where we're mm-hmm. at. And then I got desperate, and I picked, hopefully I have the right thing here, yep, the Silent Hill 2 remake. This is your riskiest pick. It definitely is risky. Now, uh, rating-wise. Oh, score-wise? Sure. Score-wise. So here's here's how I rationalize it. I mean, this. yeah, it might also not come out this year. <laughs> exactly. But like, score-wise, I mean, there's a chance this thing gets fucking hammered. There is, because people love Silent Hill 2 yeah. so much. The bar I, is high. I this. thought about that. But the other thing I thought about, Matt, was that Silent Hill 2 is so damn good that you would have to be completely incompetent to remake it and bomb it. Well, I have news for you about people's opinions of Bloober. That's they, true. They, I don't agree with them, but a lot of people do seem to think Bloober team is incompetent. Yeah, I would say incompetent, but also they've already fucked up a Silent Hill two remaster. That's true. Actually, so, like, yeah. you can do it. <laughs> but it's again like I'm looking at what's here and what was available at this point in the draft, and I was just like, is there like okay? First of all, PlayStation in its opening year like these are our games for 2024 Mm -hmm. it was in there so playstation is pretty confident it's gonna make it this year i think it will make it this year it could still be delayed out and again like you'd have to be such an idiot to not not maybe screw it up but make it a bad game Mm -hmm. and at this point i'm like i'm trying to get a seven or higher or maybe an eight and i was like this game when it came out was like a 10 for most people if bloober drops the ball and totally screws it up maybe they still get it to like a seven or whatever I, I don't this know. was the rationale i was i'll tell you this much you could have picked this last would you have never I picked would never it? have drafted this. really interesting i don't, I don't well actually i'm not that surprised because you did mention when we talked about it at the end of the year last year mm-hmm. that you were down on it so you're right maybe i should have remembered that and picked it later Good point. I would never have picked this. Oh, wow. Yeah, I definitely screwed up then because I could have got it later than I did. But that's how this works. I can't read your mind and you can't read mine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I wouldn't have picked Princess Peach, but you may have thought that maybe I would have. Like, there's just no way to know. We know each other pretty damn well, but not that well. The Nintendo bump, I think, I thought you might be like, oh, it's definitely coming out and and, and reviewers love the Nintendo no matter what it is. Yeah. And that, honestly, was the only game that you could really pick from Nintendo. Yeah. In this draft, because everything else is a everything remaster, else is a remaster. remaster. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's all there was, and then unless you're guessing on Switch Two stuff or whatever. Yeah. So, so there you go. Um, my pick is Silent Hill Two Remake. We'll see how it all turns out, and then your next pick, Matt. This is the one where I was like, "Damn it!" <laughs> like, so you, you're saying earlier, there's a couple where you yeah. were like, "Damn it!" This is the one where I was like, "Damn it!" And what is your mm-hmm. pick? Unicorn Overlord. Yep, I am like 95 to 100 percent sure that this will be one of the games that is talked about at the mm-hmm. end of the year as like the sleeper hit. This game is coming from Vanillaware. It's a strategy RPG, has killer art. Vanillaware just has this cachet in the industry, particularly with people mm-hmm. like us who have worked in the industry for a long time. When we hear the word Vanillaware, our ears perk up, and that's just the way all critics are in this industry who have been in this industry for a while. Um, And I I think you may need to hope, Matt, that some of the older staff members review this. Yeah, if any of them are still there. If they, and which they're not, because they're get, they would they would have to get paid more than fifty grand a year, yeah. which means that they're unemployed now. So <laughs> it really is sad what games journalists are paid. Yeah, I mean the the, the advantage is is even the kids who are in their twenties grew up playing Odin Sphere. Yeah, so that's true. I saw a I'm not going to say what website it was, but there is a kind of a young newish gaming website in europe that was hiring for like their lead editor and they wanted to pay him 
35,000 euro a year. <laughs> That's nothing. Dude, I was like, what? That's like, like you'd do better if you just went and worked in a store. Start your own YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway... This game, I think, is going to score big with the older folks. People like Matt and I. We'll see who ends up reviewing it. I have a feeling most of the older staff members are going to request that game, and they're going to get it. Because I don't think, like, a lot of the younger staff members are going to want to review it or want to play it. So. I don't know. I mean, I think it's parallel enough to, like, the HD 2D stuff, like uh, uh, Octopath Traveler. and so. That's I, true. I think it's akin akin there enough that... And they have stayed... With the Odin Sphere remaster and the, and the, the Dragon's Crown... PS4 version, I think they've stayed in the in the in the zeitgeist of that kind of niche well enough. Mm -hmm. There's probably a couple people on on those staffs that's gonna do. I think it'll do well though. Yep. Uh, they're having trouble moving that stupid collector's edition though. I'll tell you that much. It does seem that way. They, they 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 that's been sitting there not sold out forever, and they put another like little promotional thing up for that like a couple weeks ago or a week ago. Yeah. So I'm like, clearly nobody cares about that, but I do want to play it. Yeah. Um, okay, so my, what pick am I on now? Three, four, five, this is my seventh pick. Wow, we're going fast. We're actually getting this draft done really quickly. Um, my seventh pick, and you may, may now remember watching the last episode of Game Face, how I talked this game up, and now you know why, because my next pick is Ayudin Chronicle 100 Heroes. This is the only, if I, if I could steal one from you, it would be this one. Oh, really? I think this is going to get like 9.5. I don't. I don't I think do. it'll score that high. If they, if they nail it, um, this might be one of the highest reviewed games of the year. You think so? Yes. 100%. I mean, I was just counting on you not thinking of it until later. Oh, uh, I was. It would have been my next pick. Okay. I was encouraged by their first game. Yeah. So I wouldn't have picked this unless I played the first game and saw that they were actually good developers. Once mm -hmm. I played that, I was like, okay, now I'm going to start keeping an eye on this. Cause this is the this is the crown jewel. This is what everybody had their eye on when they went and backed the the Kickstarter. They didn't yeah. want the little spinoff thing. The spinoff thing wasn't this. even involved in the campaign. They right. decided to do that. Yeah, which and is it, so weird. It is an odd <laughs> little extra thing they did, and they are gonna. It is gonna affect this. Like they're gonna import the save data, and it's gonna. Yeah, yeah. But you what you did in that is gonna be related here, but uh, which is cool. But it's just like yeah, it's just weird that they. We just made an extra game yeah, for no just reason. Just like, we're just going to crap out an extra game for y'all. Um, but I'm glad they did, because I probably never would have picked this game in a draft unless I had played their prior game. To see that they're actually the... I, look, I know the pedigree of the people who are working there is mm -hmm. pretty much untouchable. But still, yeah, people think, get older. I think that came... Because it, it is a different team that did the other game. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like that might have come from when Bloodstained did like the 8-bit the oh, yeah. style. Oh, yeah. They did their little spin-off thing. thing. That's I, right. I think it, wonder if that came from that. Could be. Inspired by, at least. There's other, other All the Konami people probably talk to each other. I'm yeah, yeah. Ex-Konami superstars. Yep. But this is one to keep an eye on. This is also another game that I would say, when you go to do the Sifted Fantasy Challenge, you might want to keep this one in mind. Mm -hmm. This is one of those games that, like, you pick with maybe your 10th pick or whatever. Could be your ace in the hole to lead you yeah, on I to victory. I definitely don't see it going lower than a 7, even if it's really mediocre. Yeah. Um, but if they nail it, if they get if they get circuit and 2 level quality out of this thing, I, I think you're looking at one of the top top games of the year. I would be very happy to hear that, although I'm not I'm definitely not counting on it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that would be awesome. Um, okay, Matt, what is your 7th pick in the draft? Visions of Mana. Visions of Mana. Yep, we just talked about this one as well. I'm just gonna sit, keep sitting here in the JRPG zone. I mean, here. we're just this, we're kind um, of in that. <laughs> what we're and doing? I'll, I'll admit <laughs> uh, the presentation of it at the developer uh, direct direct um, actually did push me into putting this on the list more more readily because it looks pretty solid. It put like, this game on my radar for sure. Yeah, yeah. like it, it looks. Seeing that Square Enix was committed to it, and it wasn't just one of those little side projects mm -hmm. that they do like three times a year where you can tell they had like thirty guys working on something. For, yeah, like, like it's clean. It looks good. Like. I can't. I couldn't pick uh, that Grand Blue uh, Fantasy Relink. Fantasy Relink because it's yeah. this week. So yeah. like, but like, uh, this is kind of the next best thing. Yeah. Um, again, seeing the resources that Square Enix has put behind this encouraged me. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, this is a legitimate release for Square Enix. This isn't something where they're like just trying to cash in on the mana name. So I'm with you. Like my my anticipation for this game shot up. After it was in the uh, Xbox Developer Direct, for sure. Eve um, Demon says, is Found Fantasy isn't on the selectable list for the Fantasy Challenge? Uh, Rebirth? Yeah. It should be. It should be, Eve Demon. Is Lashik on chat today? If not a lot of people have signed up, if Lashik, if you can hear this, oop, in the clip, 
ran out. Lashik, if you can hear this, um, definitely make that one available for people to draft. Because that doesn't come out until uh, leap year day, February 29th. Um, and I had basically just told him anything this week. Um, and then Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. I told him to take that out. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth should be there. So hopefully not enough of you guys have went and done it already. Because we don't want to screw people who weren't able to pick it. So that's the issue. It may actually be a case where we can't add it late because we don't want to screw people who already went and did their picks. But if if he can go and look and say, "Oh, like hardly anyone's done it yet," then maybe he can switch no it. No Hellblade two. No Hellblade two. Oh, that's also an oversight. That should be there. I mean, in that case, you should just wipe everything and have people do it again. You're right. Yeah. Last shit. Yeah. You should probably just wipe out. I hate to say it, but wipe out anyone's entries and add at least those two games. You might want to do another pass. Um, Flight Sim 2024, there's another one. Okay. All right. Looks like we have some work to do then. Um, but Blashik may not be listening now. He's not posting anything in chat. So I'll contact him when we get out. And then follow us on Twitter. Case Money says Hellblade 2 is there. You're probably looking for the two eyes or the number two. Mm. But still, you should be able to find Hellblade. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you, th- you have a whole week. To submit these, by the way. This isn't closing until Game Face next Tuesday. You'll have all week long. And don't forget, Matt. You'll have all week long to submit your picks. So you have plenty of time. So don't go do it. Give us maybe an extra hour or two to kind of clean these up. They are saying no flights in 2024. So, um, oh, it's under Senua's Saga yeah. instead of Hellblade 2. There you go. Um, but definitely flights in 2024 should be there. Um, definitely Final Fantasy VII Rebirth should be there. So we'll get those added in. Just give yourself a pause for a couple hours. Don't go add your picks until then. Wait, Case Money is saying Flight Sim is also there. What are you guys doing? You're sending us down this rabbit hole for nothing. Everything's actually there. Just Final Fantasy, maybe. <laughs> yeah, except for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Yeah. So we'll get we'll make sure we add that in there. But give it a pause before you guys go and make your picks. You should be watching our draft anyway. You should be making picks. Um, okay. Now, this is what, my eighth pick, I guess? Coming down the home stretch. And my eighth pick is, and this is where I really started to get desperate, Homeworld 3. This I is, mean, this is on my potential list. It's a good pick. I mean, for the eighth slot or whatever, but like it's just so unappealing as a draft pick. I don't know. Like, I just didn't want to pick it for whatever reason. Yeah, it's it's maybe only in this year that this would happen, but uh, the other, you know, there are other the deserts of Karzak or whatever it was. Like, <laughs> yeah. That, that rated pretty well. Yeah, I mean, all the previews for this have been glowing. Like, everyone who's previewed this so far is like, dude, it is like Homeworld 3. If you're a fan, you're going to love it. Again, Randy Pitchford at Gearbox is like, this is my baby. I am personally shepherding this one over the finish line. Randy knows these games. I trust him. If there's one thing I trust Randy Pitchford with, it's a game like this. Um and again, to your point, the studio has made great, has made at least one great game in the past. So I was pretty confident about it. Again, at this point, you're just you're just scraping to try to find games that are going to get a seven point five or an eight. That's where you're at at the end of this draft. And definitely coming out. And definitely coming out. Yeah. And this one definitely is. It was supposed to come out like last October or November, and now it has a date. I think for like May or something. So oh, it was like next month. Oh, is it? Is so it February? Like February twenty second or something. Oh, like I think that. you're right. Actually, yeah. I do remember that I was basically 100% confident it was going to make it this mm-hmm. year. Um, and as I said, like I have Silent Hill 2 up there that could be that could not make it. I started getting a little bit conservative here because I was like, man, I got some risky picks. I may need to cover my ass. And so that's what I did with Homeworld 3. And now, Matt, it's time for your eighth pick in the Sifted Fantasy Draft for 2024. What is it? Space Marine 2. Yep. This is a pick that Matt had on his team last year. And we thought it was going to make it. It seemed like it was going to make it. And then at the last minute, literally the last mm-hmm. minute, they delayed it out of the year. And didn't just Although delay it. if you it. recall, I was saying by September, this thing's not making yeah, it. Yeah. Because they hadn't talked about it. I was more positive on it than you were, for sure, that it was going to make it out. Um, and somewhere around Thanksgiving, I'm like, if it was coming out in December, I think we'd have a yeah. release date by now. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That was when the kind of the writing was on the wall. But then the crazy part is that, like, they didn't just delay it. They delayed it to, like, September yeah, they, 5th. They pushed it nine months. Which is good. Like, if you have this on your team, that's basically just nine months of polish, man. Mm-hmm. Like, if, to have this on your team, that's good. This was going to be my next pick if you didn't take it. So, I think you drafted it at the exact spot. I think it's a good pick. Um, it was a good pick last year because, again, 
the last one was like a crazy sleeper hit that people mm-hmm. didn't see coming and people really loved ultimately. So yeah, um, Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2, another game you should be looking at towards the end of your picks for the Sifted Fantasy Challenge. And we're coming down the home stretch here. We just have two different picks left for each of us. And as you guys know, I like to get a little crazy with my 10th pick. So you'll have to see what I do this year. Um, last year it paid off. I got Armored Core in the 10th slot. Mm-hmm. They got like an 8.7. I couldn't believe how high its score was. That was way too high. That game did not deserve an 8.7, but I'll take it. <laughs> so anyway, for my ninth pick in the draft, this is where I got creative. My game is the Plucky Squire. Do you know this game, Matt? No, I've heard it, but I don't remember what it is. It's really freaking cool. It is a game that takes place, as you're seeing right now, entirely inside a storybook. And it mm. uses like this crazy like marker art style. But it does it. It kind of looks like my friend's uh, genie. A little bit. Yeah, for sure. Um, the cool thing about this, though, and if you watch this trailer all the way to the end, I don't know if we'll make it to the end before I move on to uh, Matt's pick, but it starts doing some really cool stuff with the paper stuff. Kind of like um, Paper Mario style things where it starts playing on the idea that everything's built out of paper. Um this right now, if you look around, is generally the most anticipated indie game of 2024. If you do an aggregate of all the most anticipated lists, this generally is the one that's either first or second on pretty much every list. Um, and I'm really excited for it. It looks really cool. I wish we got more games like this. It was kind of sad when I finished this draft and finished the rundown for our 2024 previews that there weren't more games like this, where you just look at them and you're like, that's completely fresh. That feels completely new. There was another one, Baby Steps. But I I feel like that game could get a 2 or it could get Mm. like a 10. And and it's not a 1,000% locked in. So For this year. Yeah. yeah. So trying to find like really creative, unique games this year so far has been difficult. I'm hoping that that changes over time as the year goes on and more stuff is announced. But Mm. as of right now, the Plucky Squire is one of the more creative games. What's the one? What's the, I think it was a PlayStation showing indie but it was like it was like had like a train and stuff and like it's it was years ago and it still mm-hmm. hasn't come out i mean little devil inside that's one it of, yeah that's it we talked about that when yeah. we did the playstation preview for 2024 yeah, it where, was the last game we mentioned that's what right. the hell <laughs> where is it it's been in development for like six years i don't know what's going on with that game but we'll see not picked in this draft yeah. spoiler <laughs> sometimes that sometimes that pays off like talus project too yeah. took nine years mm-hmm. or something but like Weird. Not always. <laughs> weird. <laughs> okay, Matt, what is your ninth pick? Well, as long as we're doing weird indie things, I figured I'll pick something I know how to release date. So the so Pacific Drive. Yep. Well, this was the game that I was waffling on between the Plucky Squire because this is the other game, the other indie game, mm-hmm. that if you look at most anticipated indie game of 2024, this is the one that's number one if it's not the Plucky Squire. Now, I will say this, Matt. Some previews for this game came out last week, and one of the ones I read was negative, mm. and it scared me off. I still almost drafted it, though, because I think the game looks awesome. Like, I'm excited for it. I don't think it's going to get universally praised. I think it's going to be seven-ish. Yeah. But, but that's <laughs> it's going to come out, and yeah. that's all I had left at that <laughs> I point. I mean, that's just where we are at this point in the draft. Like, just think about last year's draft. Matt, mm. we had bangers. I picked Armored Core for 10th mm. in last year's draft. Like, just this year is completely different. I mean, usually my last picks are, my last two picks are things that are long, complete long shots. Yeah. Like, things my that, last pick always Things is. that if they drop out, doesn't matter because the alternates will take it. Yeah. But I already felt like I'd burned one of those on Star Wars. Yeah. So I was only going to do that with the final one. Yep. I felt the same way with uh, Silent Hill. I'm like, ah, I may have just burned a pick here, so I'm going to have to cover my butt a little bit. So I r- saved my last pick for my crazy one. And that's where we are right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're at Shane's 10th pick of the 2024 draft. Whatever will he pick? Well, it may not come as too much of a surprise for you guys, but my pick is Metroid Prime 4. I am just supremely confident that this is going to be the launch game for the Nintendo Switch 2. It's been in development really for like six years, but they stopped mm-hmm. and restarted it like four years ago. Retro hasn't released anything, Matt. Think about Retro's output on the Switch, man. Think about how much it costs to keep a game studio running. Dude. For that long. And they've done nothing. They did nothing from us the entire Switch era. How can this game not be done? Mm. It has to be done. 
So again, my tenth pick every year in this draft. What were they doing before? Because remember, Namco was doing this originally, right? And they took and it away they from took him. away from him and gave him back to Retro. What was Retro doing? My guess is probably meanwhile. another two D Donkey Kong game. Oh yeah, that'd be my guess. They also yeah. did Tropical Freeze for Switch, so they did that port. But otherwise, they haven't done anything for like a whole generation. Mm-hmm. That's insane, dude. That's really crazy. So. I'm just, I'm very confident Metroid Prime 4 is going to be one of the launch games for the Switch 2. If it's not, that's why we have our two alternates. I always try to shoot for the stars with my 10th pick, just go off the map, just dream basically, and hope it pays off. It did last year, it didn't the year before. We'll see if it works out in 2024. So my the last member of my squad for this year is Metroid Prime 4. And Matt, what is yours? I almost went similarly Switch 2 launch bonkers and picked Untitled 3D Mario sequel. I was right um, there. But I don't trust those fuckers, so <laughs> I went with Stalker 2. Stalker 2. Which has a pretty solid release date. You know, they have an actual day for it, but also because of it being a Ukrainian developer, you just don't know what's going to happen between now and then. So I think there's still a, sh- a chance it drops out of this year i'd be really but, surprised but I this think, also was shown at the debut of the xbox series x by the way yeah yeah but i think um odds are it does come out and does pretty well i agree yeah and i think you know, their last stalker stalker one i think it's met i went and looked while during the draft i think it was like an 82 or an 81 mm-hmm. or something like that and again you get an over an eight with your 10th pick you're dancing in the streets like, again, I got an 86 or whatever for Armored Core last year, and I was like, hot damn, I hit the jackpot. So you can get scores like that at this spot. You're doing really, really good. So there you go. Those are our base teams for 2024 that Matt and I will be <laughs> complaining about for the next 11 months as we watch the year play out and watch our games get review scores and argue that they were underscored and all that other fun stuff that we do throughout the year. And now all we have left are our alternates. And obviously, if you play this game intelligently, you want to be really, really conservative with your alternates. They have to come out. Even if they only get like a five or a six, Mm -hmm. it will still save your ass. And so we went ultra conservative with these as we always do and my first alternate is and i never dreamed i would ever say this in a million years that i drafted skull and bones hmm. <laughs> i don't i don't even know what to say about this matt but right there in the trailer it said coming february 16th and that's really is why i picked this game um it could be i don't think it's gonna be awful no i think it'd be fine like, I think it'll be better than, like, um, what was the one game I drafted the one year? Babylon's Fall. That oh, yeah, got a that three or awful. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I think hopefully it'll do better than this. Um, Cinetite says alternate sports games. Matt and I were both thinking about that, but the sports games now are getting, like, fives and sixes. Yeah, the, the constant microtransaction obsession with those just, like, has sunk the review scores into the toilet. Yeah, like they're not can. worth drafting at the end. And keep that in mind, too, when you do your, your picks for the Sifted Fantasy Challenge. Like, sports games aren't what they used to be. They're not the reliable, like, high seven or eight like they used to be. It just, the game, and I agree. Like, honestly, Madden this year, last year was terrible. Like, mm-hmm. I hardly played it at all. Like, usually I play Madden, like, the whole year off and on. I played Madden for, like, a month after it came out and never went back to it because they never could squash all the bugs. It was a mess. I didn't even enjoy playing it. Um, Vincent says MLB is safe as an alternate. Yeah, but even mm-hmm. that didn't get great scores this year. It probably was the highest scoring sports game of 2023, though, I think. Yeah, it might, might score better than Skull and Bones. We'll see. We'll see. But, yeah. So, anyway, Skull and Bones is my pick. The game's been in development for eight years at a studio with a lot of resources and a lot of manpower. And I'm just hoping, crossing my fingers, that that pedigree comes through and at least it's a passable game. But one thing I do know is it's coming out in, like, two weeks. I will know how terrible my alternate is. All right, Matt, what's your first alternate? Well, that pick, your pick of that kind of... Set the tone. Kind of sent me into uh, <laughs> into Spider-Man meeting Doctor Strange mode. I was like, oh, we're we're choosing our incredibly mediocre February release picks. Okay, uh, Helldivers 2. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, same boat, really. Yeah. Like, I'm guessing that this game gets somewhere in, like, mid-7s or something mm-hmm. like that, roughly. If it's lucky. I don't know. Um, better than a zero i mean look the way i look at it is playstation gave this studio money Mm -hmm. to make it a console exclusive and i don't think playstation knowing how public it is that it's making this shift towards games as a service i don't think it would allow a piece of crap 
to be sort of the first foray into this new frontier that they're they're embracing. You so, think? I mean, how and long yet. is it? When was what was the last PlayStation console exclusive that scored less than like a seven? Days Gone. Did that end up at less than a seven? I don't remember. It was around there, I think. Yeah. But you're right. I think that's the last one. But I mean, I think this is a pretty safe pick, Matt. Mm-hmm. like we haven't seen hardly any of this they've shown us like one little gameplay clip of it like that's one thing that kind of concerns me a little bit is that they haven't shown that much of it yet yeah, i just need something to like not be a zero when outlaws gets pushed yeah that's all or if it doesn't yeah but you're right and i i'd look hopefully i won't need, even need to worry about how right much, what what this i mean that's the idea right is that we don't worry about these alternate alternates but somehow we always end up having to rely on at least mm-hmm. one it seems like no matter how locked in it seems your team is one always gets delayed at least it seems like yeah. so that's just the way it is so hell divers 2 with your first alternate i think that's a great pick matt um, i think it's a really good pick and then for my final alternate and the last member of my squad for 2024 i chose a game where i didn't even like the original but again it's not about that and that game is Frostpunk 2 Frostpunk t- 1 got an 8.2 aggregate score mm-hmm. This game also, I think, is scheduled for, like, May right now. It's not really in any danger of not making it. It's been in development for a really long time. Um, again, the, it's it's not straying too far from the template that the first game set, which, when you're talking about drafts like this, that's actually kind of good to hear. <laughs> At least it was for me. I'm like, okay, this game got an 8, and you're making, like, the game kind of again. If you don't take any risks, that means you won't fall on your face, so... I felt like this is a very safe pick. I felt like it's definitely coming out this year. I feel like the first game got a score that is more than enough for my alternate. I think this one should do at least as well. So my final alternate for the draft is Frostpunk 2. First one was also adapted into a pretty good board game. It was, yeah. Yeah, and I think wasn't there... There's some other, like, periphery stuff around Frostpunk. Wasn't there, like, um... They do, like, a... I thought there was some kind of a short that they did around it. Like, a cinematic Uh, short. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, all I care about is the damn video game, and hopefully its sequel ends up being pretty good. Um, and then here we go. This is the very last pick in the draft map. What is your second alternate? Avowed. Avowed. This is a great pick, but, I mean, I'm sure you realized that I had not picked it because I didn't think it was going to come out, right? Mm-hmm. Or did you think I just overlooked it throughout the whole draft? I, I, I think it's definitely coming out. Yeah. I think you don't trust it to score high. Which is eh. my more no? I think be... it'll get a seven or an eight at yeah. least. But like, I don't think it's guaranteed enough to be in the main team. Yeah, I mean, I didn't um, pick it because I just really was nervous. Also, about I really not don't it. expect to need the second alternate. So yeah, it was more like, eh, it's there. It probably is coming out, and I trust it more than I trust Indiana Jones. But it could so. it could win the league for you. I mean, honestly, if you end up needing it and it does come out, like your second alternate could be one of the best scoring games on your team. Yeah. That's kind of awesome. Um, but yeah, I stayed away from this. I thought about it the whole draft because what I found myself doing, Matt, was going back and looking at the list that I compiled to do our previews. And obviously you want to look at the first party stuff. So I went and looked at Nintendo and really the only viable game was Princess Peach. You took it. Then I went to Xbox. There was like, one viable game other than Avowed, mm-hmm. like Hellblade. You'd already taken Hellblade, and then Avowed's sitting there, and it's like, I kept looking to see if there's more, and it's just like late 2024, late 2020. I couldn't find like where it even would say, like, mm-hmm. fall. Or, I, I just, Vincent notes he's surprised that if I was going to pick an Xbox. I know it was an era. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't, I mean, that's yes, but also I don't 100% trust the reviewing world to handle a 4X game properly anymore. Yeah. Um, I just they're I, hard to review. I, I mean, I'll I, admit it. As someone who's been doing yeah, this a long time, well, definitely era like what was on my radar there. But I was more of like, what do I trust reviews to overrate more? Right. That or <laughs> avowed and yeah. avowed is the answer. I, I agree with that. That's great logic. But era that's... is the better choice if you want something more guaranteed to definitely be out this year. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it seems like that game is very far along. Yeah, for sure. Um, if you guys have any questions for us before we close out the stream. I will answer them if you want to understand like some of our logic behind why we pick some of the stuff. Um, we're more than willing to answer it because obviously mm-hmm. you guys have some uh, some picks to make of your own here. Um, Vincent says, I think Helldivers has a higher ceiling than Skull and Bones. Probably. 
Yeah. Maybe and maybe not even in a fair way. Maybe in the sense that like Helldivers Two is just kind of a mediocre game, and Skull and Bones kind of has all this bias built up by being. It's got a lot of is, baggage, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, people are saying NCAA football. I don't trust that at all. I don't even trust it is coming out, man. I know that they're saying it's coming out this summer. Um, and I think it's actually not even called NCAA. It's like college football or something like that. Hmm. Um, but there's still weird stuff going on with the licensing for players. Like we just curated a story a couple weeks ago about it. That made me nervous. So I just stayed away from it. Um, Erebus Jones says football manager guaranteed eight every year. Yeah, I think they might want to find some new people to review that. But you're right. It does get an eight pretty much every year. But that's the problem as a reviews editor that you run into is like sometimes it's hard to find people to review yeah. certain games. And like you have this one person that likes it and is always willing to do it. You end up giving it to them. So... Um, yeah, I understand why it happens, but I would argue that it probably doesn't deserve that eight every year. Um, so that Saber Juno says no driving games this year. Are there any driving games well, this year? Well, first off, Pacific Drive is a driving game. It's in the title. There you go. I think um, you do drive. Yeah, you drive. Yeah, yeah you do drive. Yeah. yeah, it's a driving roguelite, basically. It, the RPG-ish. It's, it's really unique. Yeah. It's a thing. That's why it's cool. It's also it's risky. Yeah, because um, it's 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 weird enough that you could hate it. Yeah, you know what I mean, um, even irrationally, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, are, but I don't can, are they driving games? I mean, pr it's probably really a, it's probably a Forza Horizon <laughs> this year, but I, there's no guarantee. There? That, I mean, it's the time. It is every other year. Oh, we we missed the ball on that one. I don't know if we did because who knows? Who fucking? It knows? usually is clockwork. Then though. why wasn't it mentioned in this? You're right. That's true. Like that's a, that's your guarantee. Maybe you don't want to talk about Forza right now because it's so embarrassing that you launched right. Motorsport in the condition it is, and you just put out one of the least satisfying press addressments of yeah. That and I, you're not really updating. Yeah, none Forza of that like is solved yet. So maybe you're not talking about Horizon because yeah. you don't want to make it look like you're moving on mm -hmm. past before you've really fixed up uh, eight. Yeah. Oh, by the way, who do you guys think is going to win? Because I'll be honest with you, Matt, I have no freaking clue. It's a it's no a, clue. It's a bit of a coin flip at this. Yeah, point. I want to see what you guys think. Because I mean, looking at these teams, it's like <laughs> I really don't know. I think it's just fifty fifty on mm -hmm. who wins this year. I don't think to me it doesn't seem like either one of us have an advantage. But maybe other people are seeing stuff. No foam star, Threadzilla. <laughs> Congrim says surprise, just no Stellar Blade pick. Uh, I think Stellar Blade looks incredibly mediocre. I just I, we, I we talk about this Congrim, we don't trust Korean developers because these well, games Well, there's that too, but also I don't it doesn't look like it does anything interesting or new enough to really get. I mean, probably a solid pick if you want, you're looking for a 6 or a 7, but mm -hmm. I don't see it getting much more than that. Yeah. I, I honestly I just don't trust the Korean games. Like we've seen so many of them that look amazing and either we finally see them and they don't look like the first trailer or they just never come out. Um, mm -hmm. I just don't trust it, so I just stay away from it if I can. I'm gonna make I'll make a predictor. So you're gonna definitely miss Metroid Prime, I think. Um, you don't definitely. think it's gonna come out? I I hope I hope it does. Yeah. That would be that would make the launch for me, but I I don't. Mm, yeah. Um, I will make a prediction. I think Ayudin Chronicle is gonna win this for you. Really? Yes. I'm surprised to hear that. I I have I am putting big money down that a Uden Chronicle is going to shock everybody with how I hope how you're right, <laughs> but I would be surprised. I mean, it looks like people are mostly split. No, actually, they're picking me, which means I'm going to lose because every other year they pick you, mm -hmm. and then I win. They never pick you guys. Never pick the winner, right? So you just doomed me. I think. I think it's going to be as close as it's ever been. Yeah, I think it's a complete fifty fifty. I can't believe you guys are all picking me. Honestly, I I don't know how you're getting that, but. We'll see. These things are crazy. That's why I, it's fun. I think you have things like again, Ayudin Chronicle and MS and Flight Sim, and especially if Silk Song comes out, I think you've got enough like edging up to the nine area stuff that you could like et beat me by like 15, 20 points. Hmm. We'll see. That's the fun of it. You just don't know. Luna wins. That Saber says. Fair enough. Hmm. <laughs> She's always the winner. <laughs> um, I feel I feel better about your lineup. Okay, no I don't. So, <laughs> but I'm glad to hear that from you because I respect your opinion a lot. So, but we'll see. It's we always think one thing, and then crazy mm -hmm. stuff ends up happening. Fight, fight. Tjk is correct. My list is more calculated, but my calculations have to be correct. Yeah, and that often does not turn out to be the case. Yeah, because this is madness. The, <laughs> trying to figure out if games are going to release or not, it's madness. Like so. I'm most a lot of my stuff, especially past pick four, are like. Um, 
like they're calculated to be like solid but not amazing but you have more in there that i that could be home runs yeah but i'm I've, i feel like i reached a lot more than you did i feel like i have more games that may not make it out a little bit i mean i don't think so silent think, hill 2 silent um, hill 2 maybe metroid hollow prime, Knight, maybe Ho- metroid prime 4 there's three right there and i only be, have two alternates i'll be stunned if silk song doesn't come out this year eh? like <laughs> I said that last year <laughs> it, 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 but if it, we really looking at something that's gonna be two years late at that point I mean, it's already late, but like, like it was already. If it wasn't in that Microsoft showcase mm-hmm. in 2022, <laughs> I, I, you know, I would be maybe in a different yeah. zone on that. But it just feels, it feels like it has to. Yeah, we'll see. All right, that's it for our crazy marathon stream that we did today. Thanks to everybody for hanging out and chat all on the way. Good luck with you guys making your picks for the Sifted Fantasy Challenge. Also, again. Take a couple hours after this stream before making your picks. As soon as I get home, I will contact Lashik and we'll make sure that we get Final Fantasy VII Rebirth added to the list of games. Um, And if there's anything else that you guys notice that is missing, and please make sure that it's really missing, send me a DM on Sifted at Shane, and I'll make sure that those are added as well. Uh, We'll get this all fixed up for you guys to make sure everything is fair and square and nice and even. So, Matt, good luck, brother. It'll Mm -hmm. be fun to follow this stuff again. Good luck to all you guys with your picks on the Sifted Fantasy Challenge, and we'll see you back here for Game Face with an awesome episode of Game Face next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. Take care, everybody.